Hello friends, my name is Larry Miller. I will be your guide through this course on leadership and life cycles. I think we're going to have fun. I hope you're going to have fun. We're going to study some history, the rise and fall of civilizations, countries, as well as companies and leaders. And, and how do leaders relate? How do they help or hinder the emergence of a company or a civilization or a country? And how do they contribute to its decline? Companies emerge, civilizations emerge, human beings emerge. We all have life cycles, all living organisms. If you think about it a little bit, whether a snail, <laughs> your puppy, your child, or a civilization or a company, all living organisms go through stages of development. And the style of leadership that is most helpful at one st stage is not necessarily most helpful, and in fact, maybe a hindrance at another stage. So we're going to examine that relationship, and I'm going to ask you to assess your own leadership style and the, leader and the cultural characteristics of your organization, your own stage of development. And, and the ideal way to go through this is with your team, a, a team of leaders, a team of managers. But if you're going through it individually, that's, that's fine too, but maybe you'll bring it to your your leadership team. I think that would be a good idea. What is your leadership style? Are you Donald Trump? Are you General Patton? Are you Abraham Lincoln? Are you Nelson Mandela? Or Gandhi? Or Stephen Jobs? Or Bill Gates? Now think about all those characters. They're not the same. Their personalities are very different. And the role that each of those played in terms of providing leadership, in every case, it's different. And you can argue that you like some of them or you don't like some of them, or, and that's all, that's all fine. But each of them had a role to play and, and played a successful role at a time in their organization. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's appropriate for another time in another organization. And that's what we're going to be figuring out. This is situational leadership, is what we're studying. Uh, I want to make a comment on the use of history. Now, Mark Twain said, history does not repeat itself, but it rhymes. And I think that's as good a metaphor as any for understanding how we can use history. No, you will not see an exact mirror of today in prior history, or today will not be the mirror of prior history. Um, but you will see patterns. That's the rhyme. So we're going to look for patterns and understand how those patterns relate to your company, where your company or your organization is today, and what lessons of leadership you can, you can take from that. Um, th there is a problem with using history. And, and, the, and the problem is, we, we can't possibly, I can't possibly be so smart as to be completely objective about history. In fact, every history that's ever been written is biased. It's biased through the lens of the writer, through the lens of the student who looks at the history of a company or a country or a civilization. Um, and I am from the United States. I am an American, and naturally, I have read more about American history and understand American history better than I understand the history of China or Japan or Russia or other countries. So I'm going to ask you to forgive me uh, for using more examples from American history uh, because I know that better. And I want to ask you, if you're from China or Russia or France, I want to ask you to look within your own culture for similar leaders at a similar time in your history um, and ask what the lesson is from, from that. But we're also going to, of course, look at corporate leaders um, and how, how they relate to the stages of development of their organizations. Before we go any further, I'd like to say something about the genesis of this course. You know, everything is built on the work of other people, people that have come before and books that have come before or courses that have come before. Um, in 1988, I published a book called Barbarians to Bureaucrats that described the life cycles of corporations and civilizations. And in that work, I borrowed liberally from the work of Arnold Toynbee. 
Now, this may surprise you, but when I was a freshman in college, sometimes you do actually get something of value out of those freshman courses. Um, I, you had to take Western Civilization 101 and 102. And in my college, they were taught by a wonderful professor named Richard Barton. And, and Dr. Barton used Toynbee's model of the rise and fall of civilizations, and he was constantly comparing it to what was going on today. And he went through the rise and fall of Rome and Greece and the Minoans and the Greeks and the Aztecs and Incas and all these previous civilizations. Toynbee wrote a study of history, a 12-volume set that plotted the rise and fall of civilizations. And he used what he called the empirical method. And by that he meant he lined up the civilizations and he asked, was each one a unique, completely different event? Or were there patterns? And quite naturally, he found that there were patterns. There were patterns of emergence of a civilization, a process of integration, and a process of decline or disintegration. And they were somewhat similar um, through each civilization. And the causes of the emergence of the civilization were somewhat similar. For example, they never emerged out of a condition of ease. They emerged out of a condition of challenge. And he reflected on what leaders did to stimulate the growth of civilization. And what they did fundamentally was respond creatively to challenges in the environment. And I took this model and I basically uh, stole it, if you will, and applied it to corporations. And I see a similar pattern in the emergence of corporations and the decline and the personality styles, the qualities of leaders. So that's, that's where this course comes from. And if you ever are looking for a really great read, get Arnold Toynbee's work um, and study the rise and fall of civilizations. There really are great lessons. So here are the objectives of this course. Now, as I said, the big objective is to help you improve the performance of your organization and help you improve your leadership effectiveness. But more specifically, we're going to assess your leadership style, or rather, you are going to assess your leadership style as we go through the course. You're going to assess the life cycle stages, the culture of your organization, and you're going to match the leadership style with that culture. And we're going to look at what creates change in organizations, because most of my career, I've helped organizations create significant change. And you can't create significant change divorced from the leadership style of the leaders of the organization. So I'm going to ask you to think about, given the culture of your organization, what leadership style is required to create significant progress, to create significant change for your organization. So those are the objectives. That's what we're going to do. Join me. We'll have fun. And uh, let's get started.